Good morning. This is Unlock Circuits 18 EC42 Module 2, Lecture 1, MOSFET Amplifier Configuration. I'm Dr. Nurullah Sharif C, Professor and HOD, Electronics and Communication Engineering, CCAB Institute of Engineering and Technology, Vijayapura. These slides are modified versions of EC255 by Professor Wang Chu Chao of the Purdue University. Now let us consider the three basic configurations of the MOSFET. These are the common source amplifier, common gate amplifier, and the common band amplifier are the source follower. The common source amplifier figure is shown over here, wherein the source is common to both the input and the output side, and hence it is known as the common source amplifier. In the same way, the gate here is common between the input and the output side, and hence it is known as the common gate amplifier. Here we have the drain common between the input and the output side and hence it is known as the drain, common drain amplifier. And also because the output is taken out at the source point, it's known as the source follower. The equivalent of this in the BJTs are the common source amplifier is equivalent to the common emitter configuration, the common gate amplifier is equivalent to the common base configuration, and the common drain amplifier is equivalent to the common collector configuration as or uh, what is known as the emitter follower in the PGT. Now let us characterize the amplifiers. The meaning of the characterization here is just to describe the features of the amplifier. One can talk about the features of the properties and the different properties or the features considered over here are the input resistance, voltage gain and the output resistance. So here we have a what you call amplifier module, which is replaced, uh, which is connected with the signal source over here with V signal as the voltage and its internal resistance are saved and a load connected to the output of the uh, amplifier under consideration. This amplifier here is replaced by its small signal model, so to say, by means of, on the output side, we have the Twin sequent over here, which is the voltage source, dependent voltage source in series with the resistance R0. And this dependent voltage source, AV0 VI, is dependent upon the input voltage which is appearing across the input resistance of the amplifier RN. We can try to find out the uh, different values of the Rn over here, Rn is equal to Vi by Ii, and that value of Rn equal to Vi by Ii can be found out from uh, the, the different values over here. And similarly, we can find the value of Av0 to be equal to V0 by Vi when Rl is equal to infinity. The open circuit is considered when Rl is equal to infinity. And just the voltage gain AV will have the RL also should be included within it. So the V0 over here, considering the RL, it's also will be something like we have the voltage source over here and the current I0 can be calculated, which is equal to AV0 into VI divided by R0 plus RL. AV0 into VI divided by R0 plus RL, and that is what is specified over here, RL by RL plus R0 into AV0 into VI, okay? And that gives us the value of the V0. So the value of the uh, voltage gain, just the plain voltage gain AV will be equal to V0 by VI, and that will be uh, naturally, you know, this VI can be taken down over here, and then that becomes, rest of the thing becomes here. So AV, not, AV will be nothing but AV0 multiplied by RL divided by RL plus R0. Now, this will be equal to AV0 itself if RL is equal to infinity. That means if these two RLs uh, are made infinity in the limiting case, they'll get canceled and this value will become one. And hence AV0 will be equal to AV. So that is the voltage gain AV. Then we have the what is known as the uh, overall voltage gain. The overall voltage gain is uh, with the consideration of uh, not just the VI, but also the V sig. 
That just means that the overall voltage gain is V0 divided by V0 rather than Vi. So you can see that AV, which is the voltage gain of the amplifier proper, is V0 by Vi. And in place of Vi, if we put V0, then it becomes GV, which is the overall voltage gain. So we need to differentiate these three quantities, AV0, AV, and GV. AV0 over here is V0 by Vi, same thing as this, but RL with RL equal to infinity. So now V0 by V0 can be uh, replaced you know, by V0 by Vi into Vi by V0, wherein Vi, Vi, if we cancel, then we'll get V0 by V0. So V0 by Vi, we already found over here as AV0 multiplied by RL, divided by RL plus R0, or you can say that as AV, and that's written over here as AV. And the rest of the thing is VI by V6. VI by V6 can be found from the uh, input side figure over here, which is something like this. The current over here, the input current over here is nothing but this voltage divided by R sig plus R in. So having found the value of the input current over here, that input current, if you multiply it by R in, then we'll get VI. So VI is II into R in. VI is II into R in. So that II is equal to V sig divided by R sig plus R in. So therefore, VI by V sig will be equal to R in divided by R in plus R sig. So we can just replace this VI by V sig by R in by R in plus R sig, and hence, and AV by the value of AV naught into RL by RL plus R naught, then we'll get GV is equal to R in by R in plus R sig multiplied by RL uh, divided by uh, RL plus R naught into AV naught. So these are the you know uh, way in which you can find out the uh, open circuit voltage gain and then the voltage gain of the amplifier proper and the overall voltage gain. Now we need to find the value of the uh, R naught. The R naught value can be found by just considering a you know. Uh, replacing the uh, output side, uh, you know, load resistance by a uh, test current source, a test current source, which is IX. And then uh, we can uh, try to find out the uh, voltage at this point. And then that voltage divided by this current is going to give us the value of the V0. So find out VX by sending the uh, you know, test current source by grounding the input side. The input side is grounded and we give a test current source and find out, measure the voltage of the output. That voltage uh, at the output Vx divided by the value of the current Ix is going to give us the value of the output resistance or not. Now let us consider the uh, common source amplifier. The common source amplifier is mentioned over here with the input side uh, as the voltage signal with the uh, internal resistance RC and the amplifier itself, which is replaced by a MOSFET. And then we have the uh, RD over here, and this can be the drain resistance. If in addition to the drain resistance, we have the input resistance of the device which is connected on the output side, which generally we call it as the load, then we'll have RL in parallel over here. However, if we replace, if we can, we can replace this by a small signal model, and that just turns out to be GM VGS. And this GM VGS is again a, a constant current source. GM is the uh, transconductance, VGS is the input voltage, which is equal to VI, and uh, this becomes a you know current source and hence we have r naught you can also have again in addition a resistance r naught a resistance which is uh, small r naught in particular as the output impedance of the uh, uh, mosfet uh, proper however for simplicity sake we have not considered over here the output 
resistance. Otherwise, that output resistance also is going to come in parallel with RD. So if we have the output resistance as well and the load resistance as well, as well, then all these three things, R0, RD, and RL will be coming in parallel. And hence, in whatever uh, you know formulas we get later on, which we derive later on, RD can just be replaced by R0 in parallel with RD in parallel with RL. So now V0, as it is very clear over here, this value of V0 is nothing but the current is flowing like this. So that means the direction of this is in this way. So current is flowing like this over here. This current is flowing like this over here. And hence, because it's flowing like this, V0 is equal to minus of GM VGS into RD. The current which is flowing there multiplied by the resistance. The current is minus GM VGS, if you go like that. and uh, GM VGS if you if you're going like that and and the V naught will be naturally minus GM VGS into RD because the current is flowing like this and we are trying to measure the voltage at this point. So V naught is equal to minus GM VGS into RD. If we have R naught and RL as well then this RD can be just replaced by the parallel combination of R naught, RT and RL. Now this GM value over here is 2ID by VOV or 2ID by VGS minus VT and we can replace this GM by this quantity and then try to find out the different values. So the input resistance of the MOSFET by default is infinite. The, the uh, MOSFET is supposed to be having an input uh, resistance or impedance of uh, infinity then in that case vi will be equal to v sig if you just see the figure earlier over here if the input, input impedance is infinite then the current flowing over here will be zero and therefore there won't be any current voltage across the r sig all the voltage v sig will appear at, uh, across the input resistance and that will give us vgs is equal to vi and the same thing is being mentioned over here vi is equal to v sig or uh, VGS is equal to VI. V sig itself is between the uh, get and the source and that is equal to VI. So this VGS is equal to VI and that is equal to V sig and we will get the AV naught is equal to the open circuit voltage gain that will be equal to V naught by VI is equal to minus GM RD. And again, if we consider the output resistance R0 and the load resistance RL, then this RD can be replaced just by the parallel combination of R0, RD, and RL. The voltage gain proper, which is AV, will be again considering the RL. Considering the RL. So once we consider the RL, then we will have this value over here. That's what I was telling. If we consider all of them, together then we will have minus gm rd rl in addition we might have r naught also and which can also be derived in the in this way wherein we can just say that av naught into rl divided by rl plus r naught is av which is what we have found out in the uh, what you call equation over here and the uh, same thing is being used over there and this av naught is nothing but minus gm rd and hence we have this equation and that's nothing but this quantity is nothing but the parallel combination of RD and RL. The overall voltage gain is considered like this GB is equal to AV because we are considering that a R in is equal to infinite, the value of GV will be equal to AV because R in is infinite. We have considered that GV is equal to R in by R in plus R6. So this is infinite divided by infinite plus uh, R6 and in the limiting case, this is going to become one in that case. So therefore, it will be GV will be equal to AV in our case of uh, common source amplifier. And uh, because this quantity is equal to one at that time. So therefore, GV is equal to AV. So let us, uh, you know, summarize whatever we have done in the CS amplifier. The CS amplifier has infinite input impedance this is a very important uh, concept of the MOSFET and draws no current at DC and a moderately high output resistance easier to match R naught is considered quite high but if R naught is not considered high then 
that also should be considered in parallel with that. And a high voltage gain, a desirable feature which is there in the needed in the amplifier. An amplifier needs uh, what we call a high voltage gain, and that is a desirable feature of any uh, amplifier, and that is given by the CS amplifier. Reducing RD reduces the output resistance of the CS amplifier. We would like to have as low uh, output resistance as possible uh, for the proper loading, but, uh, but if we reduce RD, then uh, unfortunately, the voltage gain also reduces because it is proportional to RD. We can, however, adopt alternate design techniques for the same, but it's out of the scope of the syllabus and that can be discussed uh, as a, a content beyond syllabus. A uh, common source amplifier suffers from poor high frequency performance as most of the transistor amplifiers do. At very high frequency, we have the you know parasitic capacitance like this and the parasitic capacitance at high frequency will become you know the 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 impedance due to the parasitic capacitance will become uh, zero because j z is equal to one by j omega c and if at high frequencies omega becomes very high and this total thing becomes zero so once this becomes zero, then the current will be equal to V by Z, and that is equal to J omega C, and the current will be very large because that will be proportional to the value of the frequency. So because the current is very large, the performance will be very poor at the high frequency. Next class, we'll consider the, in the part two of uh, the video, we'll consider the CS amplifier with source resistance.